Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors, who had won their fourth championship in the last eight years. Led by Warriors superstar and future Hall of Famer Stephen Curry, who put his team on his back these finals with a great supporting cast of Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, and the bench. But what if I told you this Warriors dynasty could have ended before it even started? Here's the backstory behind how the Warriors dynasty could have ended before it even began. In 2009, the Golden State Warriors drafted 6'3 guard Stephen Curry out of Davidson with the 7th pick in the NBA draft. Coming into the draft, NBA scouts questioned how well Stephen Curry would be at the next level, with critics saying he would be a tweener player, meaning he would be not too good, but not too bad. They also said he had a fragile frame, saying quote, Stephen's explosiveness and athleticism are below standard. Do not rely on him to run your team. Well, Curry was definitely able to prove a lot of critics wrong by having a masterful rookie season averaging 17.5 points per game, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds, finishing 2nd in Rookie of the Year voting behind Tyreek Evans. Yes, Tyreek Evans. Yeah, moving on. Curry would continue to improve statistically season after season, and 3 years later, the Warriors would draft Stephen Curry's Robin and Klay Thompson with the 11th pick in the 2011 NBA Draft. They would slowly become one of the best shooting backcourts in NBA history with the famous nicknames the Splash Brothers, combining for 5,029 three-point makes as of 2022, two of the most elite three-point shooters this league has ever seen. But before Clay and Steph, there was a household name in Golden State, Monte Ellis, also known as the Mississippi Missile. Drafted 40th in the second round of the 2005 NBA Draft out of Lanier High School in Jackson, Mississippi, where he would average 38 points per game and 7 rebounds a game and would win the Mr. Basketball Award in Mississippi his senior season. He would slowly become a household name on the Warriors, going from averaging 6.8 points per game his rookie season to 16.5 points per game his second season, and would average a career-high 25.5 points per game in the 2009-2010 NBA season, and was also a part of the 2007 We Believe Warriors team, defeating the first-seeded Dallas Mavericks team who had won 67 regular season games that year and was the best team in the NBA. But Monte Ellis' spotlight would soon come to an end when Steph and Curry came into the mix. With both Monte and Steph being similar guards in physical frame and skill set, with the addition of Steph being a better shooter, which made Monte Ellis not completely accept Steph Curry when he first got to the Warriors. In an interview in 2009, Monte said he had doubts about making things work between him and Curry, claiming he wanted to win and that was not the way to do so. The Warriors decided to part ways with Monte Ellis, but how he got traded was another story. On March 13, 2012, the Golden State Warriors were going up against the Sacramento Kings. On the way to the game on the road, there are two charter buses you can take, one that will arrive early to the arena and one that will arrive a little later. In an interview on Draymond Green's podcast, Stephen Curry said he took the first bus and Monte took the second bus. In the pregame, the TV in the locker room was showing game film of the Kings to know how to game plan for them and what to expect. Shortly after, the ticker below the game film showed, Breaking news, the Golden State Warriors have traded Monte Ellis, Epe Udo, and Kwame Brown to the Milwaukee Bucks for Andrew Bogut and Steven Jackson, but would quickly be swapped and sent to San Antonio in exchange for Richard Jefferson. When Monte Ellis had arrived to the arena and came into the locker room, he had just got off the phone with his agent telling him that he had been traded. But Warriors former head coach Mark Jackson probably saved the Golden State Warriors franchise in this era. In the Monte Ellis trade, Stephen Curry was supposed to be included into that trade. But because Curry had suffered multiple ankle injuries in his early career, some having him only play 26 games in the regular season, the Bucks doctors didn't approve Stephen Curry's ankles, saying his ankles wouldn't be any good and he would continue to be injury prone. By far one of the biggest mistakes they could have ever made. But Mark Jackson also had a say in why Curry didn't get traded, saying that he would give him the keys to the team, meaning that this would be his team and that he believed in him and before the game he pulled Curry aside to tell him that. At first, Warriors fans were angry that they traded away Monte Ellis and would rather have Curry traded away. In Chris Mullins' jersey retirement ceremony in 2012, Warriors owner Joe Lacob was booed by the Warriors fans. But everything would work out alright, 
because three years later, the Warriors would win their first championship for the first time in 40 years. But what if I told you the Warriors were also interested in trading away Klay Thompson in the 2012 offseason? In the summer of 2012, the OKC front office had big decisions to make in the offseason heading into the 2012-2013 NBA season. With OKC's young superstars in the making in Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, who were coming off a remarkable finals appearance, with the OKC Thunder being a small market organization and already being locked in on Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook with both of them having max contracts, the Thunder's front office were left with two options. Sign either Serge Ibaka or Harden, or pay a huge luxury tax in which the Thunder's front office were not willing to pay. However, the OKC Thunder had negotiated his rookie contract extension up to $50 million, but Harden wanted a five-year, $80 million contract extension. Uh, Jonathan Sharks, Real GM. Do you think Harden is a max player? Where would you rate him as a shooting guard in the NBA? Um, James Harden is a, is a great player for our team. Uh, he does a lot of great things for us, and um, he's going to continue to do that for us. No more questions for you, bro. <laughs> With James Harden wanting a max contract, the only way the Warriors would be able to give him a max contract is if they added Richard Jefferson and Andres Beatrice to that trade, in which Thunder's GM Sam Presti was not willing to do. The OKC Thunder wanted first round draft picks in the trade, but the Warriors did not have one to offer. Before 2013, the Warriors sent their first round draft pick to Utah in 2013, and teams weren't allowed to trade consecutive first round draft picks. For those reasons, they were never able to trade for James Harden, and the Houston Rockets traded for him, which worked out in his favor in terms of being the leader of a team and evolving each year as a player. Winning NBA League MVP in 2018, and having the best record in the NBA in 2018 as well. But it would also work out in Klay Thompson's favor because he would go on to win multiple NBA championships and be a part of a dynasty in Golden State. Now if the trade did happen, how do you guys think Klay Thompson, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant would have played together? With Klay Thompson being an elite shooter and being able to space the floor for both Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, do you guys think that OKC team would have won a championship in the future? And how would Steph Curry and James Harden play together? With Harden becoming one of the best isolation scorers in the NBA and Curry being the best shooter of all time, how do you think that duo would have turned out? Let me know in the comment section below. Like always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow my socials below in the description for updates and I'll see you in the next video.